Pharmacy Foundations, CYP450 Drug Interactions. In CYP450 metabolism, substrates, like you see on the left-hand side in red, are metabolized by the cytochrome P450 enzymes in the liver. That's represented by the blue right there. These enzymes help break down substrates into smaller, more easily eliminated molecules, like what you see on the right-hand side. When an inducer is present, the metabolism of certain drugs can be accelerated, leading to a decrease in their concentration in the body. Inhibitors are substances that inhibit or slow down activity of specific enzymes. When an inhibitor is present, the metabolism of certain drugs can be reduced, leading to an increase in their concentration in the body, and possibly toxicity. An easy way to remember this is that inducers decrease, while inhibitors heighten the level of the substrate in the blood. Understanding how drugs interact with CYP enzymes is crucial in determining drug efficacy and potential drug-drug interactions. Some drugs can act as both inducers and inhibitors. They can even act as substrates. For inducers, we have an acronym to help us remember, PS PORCs. Phenytoin, smoking, phenobarbital, oxcarbazepine, rifampin, carbamazepine, and St. John's wort. Back to the C, carbamazepine, which is an auto-inducer. You can remember the car in carbamazepine means that it's an auto-inducer. An auto-inducer means that it's not just an inducer, but it's a substrate as well, so it induces its own metabolism. Another mnemonic that we might use instead of PS PORCs for inducers would be senior cops. Let's say senior cops induce decreased crime. All right. Inducers decrease, while inhibitors heighten the level of the substrate in the blood. To help you remember inhibitors and the acronym G Pac-Man, I made a goofy Pac-Man. Pac-Man is goofy from toxicity, and inhibitors can cause toxicity. G Pac-Man, grapefruit juice, protease inhibitors like retinavir, the booster, azoles, cyclosporine, pubicostat, cimetidine, Macrolides, not including azithromycin, amiodarone, and dronedrone, non DHP calcium channel blockers like diltiazem and verapamil. These are the drugs that can potentially cause toxicity of the substrate. Inducers and inhibitors are the bullies, while the substrates are the victims. We get toxicity of the substrate or inefficacy. So the bullies don't change. The inducers and the inhibitors levels don't change, but the substrate levels do. They're getting beat up because they're the victims. The levels go up or down. A prodrug is a type of inactive compound that's converted into an active drug in the body through various metabolic processes. So it's a precursor to an active drug. The primary purpose of designing a prodrug is to improve its absorption, distribution, metabolism, or excretion, which can enhance the therapeutic effect. Key differences between a prodrug and an active drug lies in their pharmacological activity. The prodrug itself has little or no therapeutic activity until it undergoes a specific biotransformation. An example is Liz Dexamphetamine. It's Vyvanse. It's a prodrug used to treat ADHD. It's converted into dextroamphetamine in the blood but it provides a slow and steady release of the active drug, leading to smoother, longer-lasting effects compared to traditional amphetamine. This sustained release helps maintain a stable therapeutic effect. It has no action if injected or snorted and reduces the potential for abuse or dependence of this controlled drug. Now let's continue with CYP enzymes and their common substrates. We have CYP3A4 substrates and we've organized them according to the alphabet. We have anticoagulants like apixaban, rivaroxaban, and the R enantiomer of warfarin, not the major one. Then we have benzodiazepines, except for the lot drugs. You know the lot drugs, they're metabolized via glucuronidation, 
glucuronidation. Cardiovascular drugs like amiodarone, amlodipine, diltiazem, verapamil, in fact, all the calcium channel blockers. Then we have carbamazepine, which we'll see later is an autoinducer, which we saw is an autoinducer. Then the dones, which are analgesics, hydrocodone, methadone, oxycodone, ED drugs like sildenafil, fentanyl, hormones like es ethanol, estradiol, levonorgestrel, progesterone, HIV drugs, atazanavir, ritinavir, so we have some protease inhibitors that are substrates, and then we have efavirenz and other NNRTIs that are also substrates. There are the statins, not all of them, but we have lovastatin, atorvastatin, and simvastatin. See, I just remember L-A-S, Las, as in Las Vegas. Lovastatin and simvastatin are the most lipophilic. They have the most drug interactions, so we will see some contraindications with using them as well as max doses. Then we have immunosuppressants like cyclosporine. The next enzyme, 1A2, the main one is theophylline. Theophylline levels are going to be affected by inducers and inhibitors. 2C9, the main drug for us to be aware of, will be warfarin. And in this case, it is the S-warfarin enantiomer, which is stronger than the R's. So I say S for strong substrate. Then we have 2C19. Remember, it's clopidogrel, or Plavix. And the way I remember it's the 2C19 enzyme is that the C1, as in 2C19, looks a whole lot like CL in clopidogrel. Moving on, the 2D6 enzyme, I think mostly pain meds and antipsychotics. I remember that there are also some prodrugs in here like codeine and tamoxifen, which is another prodrug. On this page, I starred and highlighted the prodrugs like clopidogrel, codeine, tramadol, tamoxifen. And we'll remember that they will have the effect. Now that we went through the substrates, we're going to go through the inducers and inhibitors and see what effect they are going to have on the substrates. And we'll see some good examples in part two of the video. We covered CYP450 metabolism. We learned substrates. We learned inducers and inhibitors. We learned about prodrugs. Stay tuned for other types of drug interactions. Bye!